This is the only show where you can see this, and the only show where you can see the original finds. Not Henry Winkler, the finds, the original finds. This finds was born July 14th, 1960. 1960, I'm 28. My man out here adding. Well, he doesn't look 40. <laughs> let me let you introduce you to my main man. Now, this is the man here, as you've always known on Act It Out. I've got a co-host, a man who has a doctorate degree in psychology, because I am not going to get sued by giving out bad advice. So I let him get sued. <laughs> Give it up for my main man, dangerous dandy, Dr. David Miller. Give it up for Dr. Miller. <laughs> Dr. Miller! Dr. Miller! Dr. Miller! Isn't this beautiful? You have no idea how much rehearsal it took us for us to just get this down. Because before Dr. Miller be missing and stuff, I'd be falling down. <laughs> now, nah, Dr. Miller, to the front of you. There you go. Look at that, huh? Now, if I can get him to do the rest of it, I'll be all right, huh? Whoa! I caught him. All right, you have a seat there, Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller's gonna get hooked up. I'm gonna come out of this coat, and we're gonna be right back at you, in your face, with Act It Out. You stay tuned. on network television, act it out. This is the show that lets you write in with your problems and we listen to them. We ain't like other people. You go to them with your problems, they say, oh, I gotta go now. Not us. You write us in with a problem, we listen, then we take it, put it up on the big screen, and then we talk about it with these fine bunch of young folks here. Now, we got a letter from a very big family and they have a certain problem in this family. Now, I'm not gonna tell you what it is, because then it would be boring. You sit there and look at the segment and go, I know what it's about. This is boring. We don't want that to happen. No, I'm going to let you figure out what's happening to it, and then I'm going to come back and talk to you in my studio audience, and you talk amongst yourselves at home, because I know you'll be watching me after dinner and be talking about me and talking about the segments, and that's cool, all right? You'll never invite me over to your house for dinner, but that's all right. Maybe sometime when you're not home, I'll stop by. All right. Bad, bad Bobbo, are we ready? Sounds like a winner to me. And now those world famous words. Let's drop the lights, roll the camera. Let's see how it goes down. Guess what? What? Randy asked me out. Who's Randy? Only the best looking guy in entire senior class and the school star athlete. Get your feet off my bed. <laughs> Sorry. Mr. Perfect, huh? As far as I'm concerned, he is. Is he a Christian? Yeah. Well, I, I guess so. I mean, he doesn't go to church right now, but I can change that. Are you serious? Sure, I can tell him about Christ. In fact, they're always telling us at church to tell others about our faith. You can do that without dating. Besides, you know, it's a lot easier when you're just friends. You sound like Mom. Look, I am just trying to keep you from learning the hard way. There's nothing wrong with evangelizing, but pretty soon you're going to end up more worried about your relationship with him than his relationship with God. That's not true. And on top of that, you're going to wonder how much you can say without losing him. That's not true at all. This time it's going to be different. You'll see. Mm-hmm. Things got a little hot in there, didn't it? Well, what kind of family is this? Is this a saved family or an unsaved family? Saved. saved. Christian family, right? See, we got to speak in regular terms. This is a Christian family. See, most people for the first time tune in and say, saved? From what? <laughs> saved? It's a Christian family, okay? Now, one young girl wants to do what? Who thinks they know? What does one young girl want to do? Date the football star. Date the football star. Is there anything wrong with that? No. Oh. She got to look at her. No. 
As a matter of fact, after the show, well, anyway. All right. She wants to date the football star. Why shouldn't she date the football star? One sister pointed it out. Why shouldn't she date the football star? Because he's not a Christian. He's not a Christian? No. Does that make a difference? Yes. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. It's a big thing if a non-Christian girl, I mean, if a Christian girl dates a non-Christian guy. Is that what you're telling me here? That's a big deal? Absolutely. Who thinks it's a big deal? All right. Yeah, excuse me, excuse me. Pardon me, excuse me. All right, look here. I'm sorry, am I bothering you? <laughs> like dying of you. Yeah, tell me. <laughs> Why is it a big deal? Why waste your time with unbelievers? I mean, whenever you date, it should be, I'm not saying this all the time, but it could be a proposal. I mean, she could be a marriage partner one day. Waste your time with unbelievers? So that's what they do in church, right? When all them sinners come in church, well, we're just wasting our time with these unbelievers. Eh, get out of here. Go to eternal damnation. That's fine. I mean, what? Should they? What do you mean waste your time? You can evangelize in church, but you don't have to go out with them just to get them saved. And you think she's trying to go out with them to get them saved? No, I think she just, she shouldn't date him because he is unsaved. Get him to go to church first, then go out with him. He needs to go to, excuse me, he needs to go out to church first, then go with him. Who agrees with that? Who agrees that he should go to church first and then you go out with him? You agree? You agree? Who else? Who agrees? Who agrees? I know you don't want this sweaty Negro all over you, but it's my show, so. <laughs> I think we still found right home with, is it? Dear mommy, a sweaty Negro just stuck a mic in my face today. Mother right home, what's a mic? But anyway, um, why is she lowering her standards? Because it's not really what, what the best could be for her. Being a Christian, the best would be to marry a Christian. That We're talking about a date here. I know, but dating is a form of learning who your mate is. It is? You're going to have a hard time getting a date after this. Because all the fellas are going to be going, no, man, I ain't asking her out. She choosing the silverware and the play setting <laughs> as we speak. But that's what you think. Uh, dating is a form of choosing who your mate's going to be. Yes, it is. So you don't go out with anybody who's not a potential mate? I already have a boyfriend. Oh, you already have a boyfriend? And y'all going to get married? <laughs> you are? Well, congratulations. All right. All right. A boyfriend at home watching going, what? <laughs> when? Oh, man. Well, anyway, we're going to deal with this problem some more when we come back, because the issue gets deeper. It gets deeper, and it's a hot show. Just take one look at me. It's a hot show. <laughs> and we'll be right back with more hot topics right here on Act It Out. Hit me. Wells and the fellas. Mike Wells and the fellas. You give it up for Mike Wells and the fellas. Mike Wells and the fellas. Yes! Yes! <laughs> I'm telling you, it's a trip re rehearsing with these guys because they don't understand black slang. One day I came in, I said, get down! They all ducked. Look at me. It's sad, Jack. <laughs> I don't want to say, hit me. <laughs> I'm serious. All right. Now, when we left off, the girl was in the dilemma of wanting to date an unsaved guy. Now, let me bring this up to you. How many of y'all know a guy that's saved? I mean, that's a Christian, who you wouldn't let your sister go out with? I know some guys I wouldn't let my dog go out with. <laughs> I'm serious. Go to church every Sunday, <laughs> praising the Lord. If they come and say, can I take Bowser out? I say, Bowser, bite him. <laughs> I, know, I know some guys that aren't saved that have got it together more than the, Isn't that sad? You see somebody that's not saved, and they get in a situation, they act more Christian than a Christian would. That's sad. Right, Dr. Miller? Sure it ha happens all the time, huh? You know, there's a lot of excitement involved in, in a young person dating somebody that's different, maybe a little, little family upset a little bit, little, maybe a little rebellion there. We don't know why she's wanting to do this, but... Uh, Could it be because it's forbidden? Yeah, There's something incredibly enticing about the forbidden fruit. Right. Yes. You ever watch the, read the romance novels? I know the girls have. And we met in a secret secluded place. His family hated me, my family hated his, but we had to be together. <laughs> and as we melted in a warm embrace, I heard this gun over my shoulder and my father say, I'm going to kill you, sucker. <laughs> That's my daughter. <laughs> 
I'm serious. There's something exciting about dating something that's forbidden. But let's see if it's always the right thing. It could be exciting, but it ain't the right thing. What's good to you may not good be good for you. My daddy used to say that right before he slapped me upside my head. All right. Are we ready, bad, bad Bobo? Sounds like a winner to me. Let's drop the lights. Let's roll the cameras. And let's see what goes down. Well, give me an answer. Come on, I can take it, love petite, French food, soft music. Come on, it'll be special. It's Friday. I've got to make reservations. I'd really love to go, but my parents are strict. They won't let me go out on school nights. Unless... Yeah, unless what? Unless you'd like to go with me to my church youth group meeting tonight. Oh, okay. Well, tell your parents we're going to church. And yeah, then we'll go out. Well, I thought you might like to go with me. For real. <laughs> Are you kidding? You mean you really want to go? Well, I told you how my folks feel. I thought if you would go with me a couple times and showed interest in our faith, then they would let us go out. Besides, you might enjoy it. All right. I'll tell you what. I'll go with you tonight if you go with me Saturday night. What do you expect me to tell my parents? You'll know what they'll say. I don't know. Tell them you're going out with Shelly. They won't suspect anything. You want me to lie? Yeah, just a little one. And besides, won't it be worth it so we can be together? <laughs> My man started talking like Barry White. Right on, baby. We can be together, baby. Just you and me. Right on, right on, right on. What do you think this guy's motives are? I mean, does he want to get together for some joyous Christian fellowship? <laughs> Dr. Miller? Yeah, a lot of schools, Fonz, uh, good girls become trophies for these guys. And, uh, you know, maybe one date, depending on how far it went, that would be the end of it, maybe. Because just like having a sexual conquest, even if it didn't get that far, just the fact that he got her to go out with him, he could tell his buddies whatever he wanted to, right? We all know they lie. Uh -huh. And so he's got a good girl. That's maybe enough. So once he gets out on the date, he can lie and say whatever he want to do. That's right. That's right. Even if she just sat there the whole night and looked at him and saying, if you come near me, I'll shoot you. That's right. He can still go back and say, yeah, man, I got it. And we smacking out in the rising You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. You know what? The guy's talking in the locker room. They be lying. <laughs> I've been in the locker room. Yeah, man, I had five women. Five of them. what they do? Oh, man, you don't want to know. You don't want to know, Jack, but what they... And we be listening and lying ain't done nothing. But it can ruin your witness, can it? That's right. Absolutely. Huh? Wouldn't it be difficult? Let me come over here and ask this person here. Wouldn't it be difficult to witness to somebody... Are you Christians? Okay, thank God. <laughs> come over here. We are Satanists, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be difficult... The witness, if this girl was trying to witness to you and you had heard in the locker room that she was rounds around the fries and fries. Yeah, it'd be real hard. Real hard to listen to her, wouldn't it? Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. Do parents know what the heck they're talking about when they tell you not to do something? We sure hope so. Who, who, wait, I heard a no. <laughs> Where did you get that? Who said no? Who said no? Do parents know, brother man, do parents always know what they're talking about? Yes, they do. They do? <laughs> My brother, yeah. Right on, Fonz. Yeah, they do. Now I got a rap. You know, parents are the same no matter what time or place. <laughs> <laughs> Who thinks that sometimes parents make mistakes? Huh? Huh? See, everybody's afraid to raise their hands. Say, I don't want to run over here. Let me get past this beam. Fire hole. Isn't this authentic? We're like in a warehouse or something. All right. Well, you think parents make mistakes? Yeah, because, you know, sometimes they think they know what's right, and then they say it, and then they find out that it's wrong, and they look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Your mama gonna shoot you when you come home. <laughs> I look stupid, huh? You gonna look even dumber with no head. <laughs> but parents make mistakes, right? So why should we listen to them if they make mistakes? Say what? Because God says to listen to them. Because God said to listen to them. In the Bible, it says children obey your parents, and, and to be respectful. And uh huh. So to be a good Christian, you should listen to your parents, is what you're telling me. 
Uh-huh. So I guess if you don't ever listen to your parents, you just like blown it in your Christian faith, right? I don't listen to mom and dad. Well, that's it. Where the sackcloth and the ashes at? I'm going to the bad place. Is that the case? Hmm? Who's that inside? Yes, sir. Well, my opinion, parents don't always know what's right, but most of the time they do. Because you, you think they don't, but they've already been there. So they, they have an idea of what's going on, so you should try to listen to them if you can. Dr. Miller, why is it important that we should try to listen to our parents? Well, one reason, obviously, because it is a biblical teaching. Right. The second thing is because parents have made mistakes. Uh -huh. Specifically because we have made mistakes, we've learned from those things, we hope. But you won't and tell us about it. Well, maybe not specifically. Uh -huh. We'll tell you generally. Uh, we say, don't do that, don't do that. We may not tell you why, but mm -hmm. uh, we've been down that road before. And uh, we've, there isn't that much new under the sun. And uh, so we've, we've been there before. And so you use parents for roadmaps, we hope. Got to be good for something. Yeah, I know. Besides slapping you upside the head. <laughs> I'm telling you, I hated it when I did wrong things, boy. You know, some parents used to whip you with the ironing cord. My mama had the iron <laughs> on it. <laughs> I'd be trying to run, boy. She'd be like, <laughs> Bam! Hit me in the head with the iron, drag me back with the cord. I told you about running away from me, but I'm gonna whip you, what you doing? Man, and my father, he had a paddle. He had a paddle. You know, like one of them big ping pong paddles? But only he was devious. He took a drill and drilled holes in it to cut down on the wind resistance. Your butt looked like a golf ball when he got through with you, boy. It's rough. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna deal with this some more when we come back. And in case you've forgotten, this is Act It Out. Mike Wells, take me. We're jamming in the Act It Out set tonight, our brand new Act It Out set. Looks like a warehouse. <laughs> it's beautiful, Jack. Just to think, they built all this for Act It Out. I'm telling you, man, we started out in my bathroom trying to do this show, Jack. <laughs> Mama, no, Mama, you can't come in. We in the middle of a segment. You know, I mean, it was rough, Jack. <laughs> all right, let's go to this next segment here. Now, this is a good girl raised in a good home. Dr. Miller, do good kids make mistakes? Oh, boy, you can believe that, yeah, absolutely. Parents I know, because there's the stigma. If you're a Christian kid, or if you're a preacher's kid, you got to be perfect. Especially to the other kids, maybe who aren't church kids, right. who aren't Christian kids, they expect more of these, uh, the Christian kids, which really puts lots of pressure on them. That's so good fair. kids make mistakes. Absolutely. But how do they handle the pressure, Dr. Miller? The pressure of being oh. a Christian. Because, yeah. I mean, you got to go out in this world where you got George Michael singing, I will be your father figure. I mean, I'll tell you, what, you got it. this music out here saying sex and yeah, sex and right. have more sex. And, I mean, what do you... You better, I'll tell you what, you better have a good family behind you because the only thing that's going to save you when you're 14, 15, 16, 70 and so on is a good family. And if you don't have that family behind you, if you don't have some moral values behind you, you're going to drop. Oh, that's deep, Dr. Miller. Dr. Miller started preaching on you. And if you don't get the family behind you, <laughs> you're <Amen>. going to drop. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right, all right. Let's see this Christian kid who does have a good family behind her. Now, this is a situation. Y'all want to know what happened, don't you? Y'all want to know if she went out with him or didn't she, don't you? Well, you're going to find out in this next segment. Bad Bobo, we ready? We're ready. Sounds like a winner. Let's see what happened. Drop the lights, roll the camera. Let's see what's popping. so early. What's up? Well, the meeting isn't over. Something came up. Why? What happened? Didn't Karen say she was going over Shelly's house tonight? Yeah? Well, something very interesting happened. I ran into Shelly's mother at the meeting tonight. Can you imagine how I felt when she told me Shelly was out of town for the entire weekend? Oh, Jim. I want to know where your sister is, and I want to know now. Hi, Mom. Hi, Kim. What's up? Oh, die. <laughs> well, I tell you, them lies will catch up with you, don't they? I'm over at Shelly's house. Shelly in California? Got caught. Now, let me ask you this. Is, is she pulling her, him up? Is, by dating this guy, is she pulling him up 
or is he dragging her down? Okay, but tell me why. She's, he, he's what? He's dragging her down. How? Because she's lying to her parents. And it wasn't, you're not brought up to lie. You should he always tell the truth. You should always tell the truth? Yeah. Have you always told the truth? No. <laughs> to be honest, no. Okay, well, I mean, I'm glad you're honest. And the fact that you won the door prize is good, too. <laughs> we give our door prizes here to act it out. Who here has ever gotten busted? <laughs> Oh, who's gotten busted? Come on. Who's gotten busted? Who's gotten busted? I'm come. Oh, I, I want to hear about you. I want to hear about you. <laughs> We're going to find out here. Excuse me. Pardon me. Pardon me. Excuse me. Don't worry. I use deodorant. It's fine. It's beautiful. You've gotten busted. Several times. <laughs> <laughs> you want to tell us about one time? Not particular. I don't blame you, honey. <laughs> don't do it unless they make you. Parents have p eyes behind the back of their heads. I'm sure of it. They know. They know everything that's happened. Probably because they've been there. That's right. Hmm. 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 Who else has gotten busted? Who else has gotten busted? I promise I won't make you tell me what it is. Just tell me if you've gotten busted or not. <laughs> Who's gotten busted? Okay, come here. You've gotten busted. <laughs> yeah. What you do? <laughs> <laughs> There's lots of different things that my parents have found out that I've been doing, and I've told them maybe that I was doing something else. Um, in this situation, I think that she's not bringing him up in her parents' eyes and making him look like somebody that they can trust their daughter to go out with. Because if he's telling her to lie and they know about it now, then they're not going to respect him and want her to date him. Now, what is so bad about a little white lie, though? I mean, one little white lie, right? It's just one little lie. Yeah. Dr. Miller, one little lie is allowed, isn't it? Well, ask anybody. Uh, <laughs> What little lie? Yeah, just a little one. But you uh -huh. got to make another one to cover that one up. And then you got to make another one to cover that one up. So they start getting bigger. That's right. And, and bigger. You, and, and more and more serious. And then you get into a pattern of it. And uh, you start getting into major trouble sometimes. We really didn't mean to. Well, let me ask you this. Is she giving him the wrong impression? Because if she was willing to lie about this, that's right. wouldn't it seem to his mind that, he's willing, that she's willing to lie about something else? That's right. Absolutely. Who thinks that's the way it is? Huh? 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 Yeah, let me come over here to you. You think that's the way it is? That's right. One lie uh, continues on and on and on, and you know, pretty, pretty soon, you know, uh, you're deceiving your parents, and uh, the other person believes uh, that they can get you to do anything they want to, you know, get you to do. I mean, she's not so bad, is she? I mean, she did try to get the boy to go to church, didn't she? I mean, didn't she try to do that? She did try to get the boy to go to church. So, so is she all wrong? My man over here is like, yeah, she's a dog, man. Yeah, but fine. She, she's she, never should have lied. She's compromising her beliefs and her values to get him. He's not compromising. But isn't he worth it? No. <laughs> he's not? Who doesn't think he's worth it? Who do okay, I'm talking to you. He's not worth it? What's wrong with him? I tried it. I, try I did the same thing. I was... <laughs> I tried missionary dating behind my parents' back, and it was not worth it because I got more trouble than it was worth. Well, what happened? Every time I turned around, I was in trouble. My parents were yelling at me every time I turned around, and I just thought, you know. So why did you keep doing it? Because I liked him. You liked him. Is that so, now, is that so wrong? If you really like a person, I mean, it, sometimes it's hard to control your heart, isn't it? We can sit here in the studio audience and say, well, this is right and this is wrong, but come on. Haven't you ever been, has anybody here ever been in love with somebody and reason just went out the front door? Raise your hand if you've ever been in love with somebody and sometimes they got the best of your reasoning. Come on, be honest, be honest, be honest. I mean, I've done stupid things to get the attention of a girl. Dumb things like give her my whole paycheck. <laughs> my whole paycheck. I'm broke, busted, and disgusted. Eating bologna, she eating caviar, got all my money because I just want to show her how much I love her. She took my money and bought her other boyfriend a leather jacket. <laughs> he looking good, I'm looking terrible. When you're in love sometimes, you just can't reason. Who, who agrees? You thought, I mean, you, you hear all these songs, especially black folks, we can write some songs about being in love. I can cross, I would cross the desert seas on my bended knees for you, baby. Lying. I ain't crossing my knees on the desert for no woman. <laughs> She gonna stay in the desert, <laughs> But I mean, you know, ain't no mountain high, ain't no valley low, nothing can keep me from getting to you. Love sometimes overconquers everything. So is that wrong? Should she be blamed because she fell in love? 
Dr. Miller. Yeah, but that's the whole problem, Fonz, because we, we, you know, if she does fall in love with this guy, mm -hmm. and he can be a you know, real nice guy, we don't know what he's, what he's like, really. Right. Um, but then she's going to lose her objectivity, and then she's going to specifically, the reason that, that God told us not to do that was because he knew the, the, the power that emotions can have on us. And when, like you did giving your paycheck away, who knows mm -hmm. what she's going to give away, right? Oh, and yeah. she won't mean to do it either, and she'll regret it either. Yeah. Okay? But that's, that's the point. That's the reason for, uh, for being careful in the first place. So God knows that sometimes our emotions run away with us. Absolutely. Why the heck did he give them to us? Have, who here has ever wished they weren't born with emotions? You know, you just <laughs> wish you could just shut it off. He comes into your life, breaks your heart, or breaks, you know, or she breaks your heart. You just wish you could go, gee, I don't feel nothing no more. I don't feel a thing. I can shut them off. Man, I've been in love. Woman broke my heart. People see you. What's up, Fonz? Nothing. <laughs> what happened to Sheila? Don't say that name, man. She left me. Took my paycheck. <laughs> see that leather jacket? That's my paycheck. <laughs> love sometimes overrules your reasoning. But we're going to deal with this. We're going to get into this subject deeper. Because guess what? When we come back, we're going to have the actual people that you saw up on the screen right here on the set. And we're going to get to the bottom of this. And you can only see this happen right here on Act It Out. Let's go for a break. Hit me, Mike. <laughs> and the fellas. Give it up for them. Yeah. Yeah. Way to go, way to go, way to go. All right, on acting out our policy when we bring the people up is we never give last names. We just give you their first names because we don't want you knowing who they is and embarrassing the heck out of them later on. So the names have been changed to protect the innocent, as it were. Immediately to my left is Karen. No. All right, Karen. To my far right, Karen's mother. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Laura. Hello. Hello, Laura. And right here, Karen's sister. This is Kim. Kim. What a beautiful name, Kim. All right. All right, Karen, give me the lowdown. What happened on the date? Well, he took me, he picked me up at my house and took me Which to... Which is a good place to pick you exactly, up, when you think of it. Exactly, exactly. Took me to La Petite. Petite. Yes, and of course he, it was a very romantic date, according to him. And Wait a minute, according to him? Well, I really thought this guy was going to be great, mm -hmm. going out with me, being the, the school star athlete mm -hmm. and everything. But I, I was He had a reputation, right? Oh, definitely. You thought he was the most big popular ladies guy man, in school. Most popular guy in school. So, and you wondering why now? Yeah, I wonder why now. <laughs> It really wasn't worth, I mean, getting in trouble and all that was, was, wasn't really worth all that. What would have made it worth getting in trouble? <laughs> well, I guess my impression of him was, was he was just really something else, but it turned out to be kind of really not what I'm looking for. Did, did you really intend to take him to church with you? Yeah, I did. I you wanted him. to get him, make him a Christian? Yeah. I took him to church, and I thought that if I would take him to church, then he could uh, be witness to there, mm -hmm. and the seed would be planted. Mm -hmm. And possibly, you know, if the relationship would have developed. Now, now, if he got saved, would you go out with him now? Oh, definitely. You would. So he's a dog if he's unsaved, but if he's saved, all of a sudden he's beautiful. Well, <laughs> consider that I was in so much trouble, yeah. Oh, okay. It's a trouble factor that's an I issue here. I don't think I would carry on a big relationship with him, but I would go out with him again, possibly. And since, you know, if he was a Christian, but now I can't, of course, since right. mom said no. All right, now, now, mom. Yeah? Boy, look at them eyes. Boy, that's some, them some mama's eyes, boy. <laughs> when my mama looked at me like that, boy, I ran, boy. I didn't do no good. She got the iron out. Boom, it was over. All right. So tell me, what happened after the, you know, after everything stopped here? What? Um, how did you feel knowing that she had lied to you? I felt betrayed, absolutely betrayed. I was, I was so disappointed in Karen. We had an understanding, her father and I, and her sister, we had always agreed that they were just not going to date non-Christian men. Why? What, what if a really nice kid came by? Moral, real nice, you knew his family even though they weren't Christians and he was a really nice guy. 
I'm glad he's a nice guy. They could be friends, and I mean casual friends, but I just don't think she needs to date him. There, there are principles involved here. A non-Christian will have no understanding of the standards we've established. Her father and I have established a character in her, a personality in her, mm -hmm. that we just want to continue to be Christian. I understand. And she just be influenced by this guy that doesn't know the Lord. Okay. So Kim. that's our concern. Okay. All right, valid. Kim, Kim, yes. what's your observation on this whole thing? I mean, why? Now, you um, kind of spoke from experience. Did you get into the same uh, trouble? What experience? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. I never told either one of them, but, but when I was in high school, I went out with the Sun Save God. And we only went out once. And once was enough. This is the first time. I know. I'm this. sorry, Mom. I'm sorry. I know. I know. Okay, I know. Um, he, I thought, hey, I thought he was fabulous, you know. Mm -hmm. I thought he was great. Mm -hmm. You know, he's really good looking and all, but he does not have the same moral values that I had. So moral values are attractive in a guy? I mean, well, I mean. Well, you don't find out until you go out with him. What kind but, of moral oh, oh, so I get it now. Have, so, I mean, when you look at a guy, you say, boy, look at that set of moral values. I mean. <laughs> no. No. So what attracts you to a guy? Well, obviously, you're going to look at his outside. Uh huh. But once you get to know him, it's his but, inside. Well, wait a minute, you're telling me. Important. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know, fellas, we, we, we get tired of this. Because, you know, we get judged. You, know, you only go out with girls for their looks. And here's two women here saying, well, you're going to look on the outside. You know, I thought women were supposed to be more sensitive, particularly Christian women. What's the scripture? God doesn't look at man the way man looks at man. Man looks at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. So, Dr. Miller, shouldn't we look at man the same way? We're supposed to look at man the way God does as much as we can, but the problem here is we've got some young people who haven't developed all those skills yet. That's what mom's talking about. And until they develop the skills, they should be going using her advice, we would hope. Exactly. That's the whole idea. So when you become older, do your values change? I think your values, yeah, change, mature, probably. You believe maybe believe the same thing for different reasons, okay, as you get older as a Christian, especially. Mm-hmm. Same things for different reasons, maybe. Uh-huh. Yeah, that makes sense. You when you get older, your values solidify. And now, now that I'm in college and everything, I really understand what mom was talking about when she raised us, that it's, it's really not worth it to date an unsafe guy because they haven't got in their heart what we are looking so, for. So wait a minute, so what the heck are you guys gonna do if you meet a guy who is not a Christian and you like him, and you really like him? What are you gonna do? Too bad, bud? It's gonna have to be that way. I don't believe that. You've gotta choose somebody, and you're gonna serve somebody. That's what's so important. I've been telling them and telling them. If they choose to date a non-Christian, then they will be serving his values. They will not be serving I, the Lord. All right, nice all right, all right, hold on, hold on. I want to get some people into this. I want to get some people into this. Who wants to talk to this family? Yeah, yeah. Here's the story. Here we go. Yes, sir. No disrespect meant, but if she wasn't such a nag about it, I think that she might accept it a little bit better because uh, it's, it's just the attitude. It's it's like they say, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So mothers should be, uh, uh, you think she should be nicer about it? Well, it's not nicer, it's just the fact that she says, you know, you did what? Instead of saying, why didn't you tell me about this? And wondering why they didn't confide in her, uh, you know, I, it just baffles me. The attitude. the attitude. Who agrees with this? Okay, yeah. I think the mother should have been more of a, a friend, a little more understanding and compassionate rather than just a sort of an authoritative dictator in a way. How do you answer this, Mom? These people are saying that um, on this point, you kind of blew it. What do you, what? Well, I'm disappointed. When I'm disappointed, I might speak maybe in anger, but it always comes from love. I am concerned about their future. And if I have to come across as the heavy and the authority figure, then I choose that because I know down the line mm -hmm. they're going to run into trouble unless they understand that discipline. But I love them. I love Kim and I love Kim. But what, you know what strikes me as strange? How many times have you heard this from your own parents? And you appreciate it, but at the time it's like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, I know you love me, Ma. That's fine. But I want to live my own life. How many times have you heard this? And you appreciate what they're saying, right? But it kind of goes here and here. Dr. Miller, I mean, give me some insight on what's popping here. It, should she have been better in this situation or what? what? Well, you know, maybe. But, the, you know, that's the job description of a parent is to, is to deal with the tough issues here. Mm -hmm. We don't need parents to be good guys. We don't need parents as friends. We've got lots of friends. We need parents to be parents. You don't need parents as friends? No. Well, we need parents. I only got two parents. I Sometimes get that not about, even that. 
That's I don't mean problem. enemies now. I don't mean okay. enemies now. I'm gonna say, you, you come on, your mama got a machine gun. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, sucker! <laughs> Mom, can we talk about this? No, but we, we have lots of friends. We only have two parents. And so parents have a special job. And maybe mom did come a little hard at me. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I would have done the same thing, frankly. You would have done the same Absolutely. thing? Absolutely. Probably worse. I have two daughters, and, and I'm sure I would have reacted. Something happens when you got daughters, boy. It makes you crazy, doesn't it? It makes oh, it drives yeah. you nuts. I got two girls, boy. When they start dating, it's going to be rough. I'm going to greet the I'll boy. Thank you. I, I'm serious. <laughs> I'm going to be at the door waiting on when the double bell shotgun's out off. Yeah. How you doing? <laughs> Can I think of my daughter, huh? You ain't kind of movie you going to? No, you're going to a walk in movie. Walk in. And you ain't taking that van either. Get that rolling motel out of here. No. <laughs> when you got girls, you got to be careful. That's right. You know, it is that this guy was a bad guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he could be the greatest guy in the world and still just be, just have a different value system and, and just not be suitable. There's some wisdom there somewhere. Okay, what, what kids in the audience have had a similar experience to this? Who has had a similar experience to this? Okay, I'm going to come back to you. She's doing one girl. Everybody else says, no, I have never done nothing wrong in my life. Everything is beautiful. <laughs> You've had a similar experience. Yes. You're just bearing all your dirty laundry on acting out today. We love it. God bless you. You don't mind me leaning here, do you? I'm getting makeup all over your shirt. It's beautiful. What? Um, my parents were not, not exceptionally kind about it. I mean, you know, with the guy, they, they sh let him know that they didn't like him. And the fact... They let him know they didn't like him? <laughs> my man came to the house, we don't like you. Slam. That was basically it, yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, the fact that they were not supportive I mean you know they didn't sit down with me and talk to me rationally about it they just yelled at me that just made me more rebellious all right let, let's, let's let's look at something here somebody give me a definition relationship versus friendship what's the difference between a relationship and a friendship can she be is, can she be friends with this guy she can't date him but she can be friends with him you don't have you don't you don't have a, well, what's a date what's a date couldn't this just be two people going out together? Two friends going out together? I've used that line before. We're just two friends going out together. Yeah, what constitutes a date? What constitutes a date? Somebody said, I, know, I never thought of that before. <laughs> what do make a date? <laughs> two friends can't go out and see a movie. So if me and my man here decide we're gonna go out and see a movie, <laughs> y'all gonna say, look at them two homos. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that, what's, a, what's a date, Dr. Miller? I don't know if I can define a date for you or not, but, but I know that, that young people have a hard time with that because it's very difficult for young people to separate a romantic interest from a friendship. One of the, one of the marks of moving into adulthood is that we can have an opposite. I, are you that stupid? You can't separate a romantic it's relationship from a friendship? It's emotions. It's, 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 it's new, notions? It's emotions, new emotions. Emotions? That are, that are new to, the, to young people, newer to young people than are to us. So what? It's harder to deal with. Who agrees with this? <laughs> Who agrees with this? Who disagrees with this? Who disagrees? Who disagrees? Who's got the courage? Oh, uh-huh. Well, I think I can tell a romantic relationship from a friendship, definitely. When it's another guy? Yeah. You can tell? Yeah. How can you tell? Well, you can just tell by the way they act around you and the things they say to you, whether they're romantically interested in you or not. What do they do? Well, it just gestures. <laughs> gestures? <laughs> Watch out. Gestures. So I guess a guy that comes at you like this, you say he's romantical, right? <laughs> and the guy that kind of goes like this is wanting to be a friend, huh? Let me ask you this. What is your resolve as far as all this is concerned? All right? I mean, are you going to listen from now on? Or, I mean, how did you work this out amongst yourselves? Well, I still feel that going out with a guy on a date, since I'm since I'm still in high school, doesn't I'm not looking for marriage right now. What's wrong with going out and having a good time? I still feel like, I don't feel like it's wrong to go out with a, a non-Christian. I, I really don't. But if mom wants me to do that, not do that, then I won't do it. But I still, that's, that's just the way I feel. Now, wait a minute, if I may. Would you have not been so upset if she had designated this a friendship as opposed to a date? Would, would it have been all right for her to be friends with this guy? You have to understand Mm -hmm. That if you're going out and you're going to date, eventually the person you date is the person you are going to marry. Wait a minute, you every, every cannot, date? You cannot, I'm not saying every date, but you're developing patterns that aren't the right patterns. One friendship, is it one date? Is it going to be friendship at two? Is it going to be friendship at three? At what point does it not become friendship? I mean, you're going to be emotionally attached to this guy sooner or later. 
what if he starts wanting you to compromise? You started this friendship with lie and deception to me. So what kind of a friendship is that? What's the next step? Why are they discussing this? What's yeah. the next step? We're going to go to a break. We'll be right back. What is it? I mean, were you, you lied to me about going out. Are you going to lie to me about something else? Absolutely wonderful. All right, now this is my this is my time in the show. This is my part in the show where I give the lowdown from my perspective. This is purely the Fonz's perspective. You can take it, you can leave it. It's the Fonz's perspective because, well, it's my show. When you get your show, you'll be able to tell your perspective. But as long as it's my show, I tell my perspective. All right. Number one, kids, no matter how much they get on your nerves, no matter how wrong you think they are, listen to your parents. Obey your parents. If you disagree, talk about it. If they don't want to talk about it, pray to God, ask God to move on your mom and dad's heart so you can talk about it. Or write us here to act it out. We'll put it up on the big screen. You tell your mom and dad what, what's in your house is going to be on television, and I guarantee you they'll talk about it. That's why we're here. If you don't agree, write us. We'll put it up on the screen, and I guarantee you'll talk about it then. You go to your dad and say, Dad, well, you, you know, we wouldn't talk about what we had a problem with, so I, 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 put, I sent it to a national TV network. It's going to be on tonight. <laughs> that father will slap you upside your head and then sneak him a TV in the bathroom and go, I wonder what that boy told him I did. <laughs> you can write us, and we'll put it up on the big screen. Number two, when you're in a dating relationship, define what it's, define dating and friendship. Either tell the guy, this is a date, or either tell the guy, no, we're going as friends. Define it, okay? And number three, communicate with each other. Parents, communicate with the kids. Don't lock each other out. Kids, communicate with your parents, all right? Dr. Miller, you got something to add on to that? Fonz, we have to be able to listen to parents, and parents have to be able to share with their kids what they've done. A little embarrassing, maybe, but, but maybe mom could have shared, I had a date like this, such and such happened. So they're human beings right. as opposed to totality. Parents, and, yeah. God gave us parents who are older than us because they've been down those roads before. Gotcha. And even though we may not be getting along too cool when we're, when we're teenagers, we're our parents, and we, we ought to listen to them. I, I agree with that. So I'm telling you what, we're going to get ready to get out of here, but we're going to be back right in this TV, your TV, next week with more problems. Yes, we're going to put more people's business out in the streets. We don't care, though, because we're getting paid for it. <laughs> Not very much, <laughs> but we're getting paid for it. But no, the real reason we're here is because we love you, and God loves you. So do we. Studio audience, do we love the people at home? So we'll see you next week right here on Acting House. Mike Wells, take me home.